Well, if you guessed Oliver 500, you are correct. That's what we have acquired now. And it is living, hopefully, at its forever home. Well, here is the Oliver 500. And this cute little thing I found at a Agco dealer who is in the next county over. He called me and he said he took this in on trade and I actually turned him down the first time and thought, ah, I don't know. But then I kept thinking about it and it was kind of nagging at me. So I went back and got it. Basically what this is, is a David Brown 850. In the 1960s, I guess the race was on for fuel economy perhaps. And so Oliver bought these 850s that were repainted and have a slightly different grill to resemble Oliver's and uh, sold them as the Oliver 500. You could get it as a gas or a diesel. And uh, I mean, I, I don't know really why they were too worried about this because this essentially is identically the same size to a 550. A 550 is 35 horsepower and so is this. But I would say that this would run all day on a tank of fuel. It uh, seems like it's just very easy on fuel. So perhaps that was the biggest uh, reason why. Because if you had a gas one, I don't know that it was really that much different than a 550. So if we look at the literature here, right away at the top on the piece that I have, they're hyping up the traction efficiency. And if I remember, there was uh, somewhere in the neighborhood, I think, of five different pieces of literature on the 500, and I just have one. But you look at it, and it starts talking about the weight advantage, uh, Oliver 500, Working power, unapproached in its class. Grips the ground without the need for wheel weights. Uh, pedal control differential lock. That's a big feature that was unique to these more than any Charles City built tractor. Uh, high productivity at low cost. And that's talking about the fuel efficiency. So that was a big uh, selling point. They also are six forward speeds and two reverse. Very much like the Charles City Cousins, except this one has two sticks to shift it. Uh, talks about the adjustable uh, adjustability of the wheels. In your sidebar here, it talks about 35 brake horsepower. Click wheel sets traction, or correct weight for maximum traction. That you'll see in a minute on the back. Uh, linkage drawbar standard, swing drawbar optional. Key starting, light switch, tachometer, oil pressure, warning light, temperature gauge, handbrake for parking or working on rolling land. That is something that I wish that the 550 had, and this does. However, mine I could not get to work, so I'm going to have to figure out what, what it's missing or why. You look on the back, and it shows you a picture of the controls. I will put a copy of this in the video so you can see it clearly, because the glare off of these glossy pages doesn't doesn't work very good on videos uh, and it shows you number one an all-purpose hydraulic control lever raises lowers implement depth number two the adjacent preset guide eliminates feeling for proper implement depth automatically returns to the same predetermined depth after raising the implement for turns that is messed up on this tractor that handle just flops so we're gonna have to figure out what to do with that Hand wheel transfers any desired part of the implement weight to the tractor wheels. That's that star wheel there. Number four, differential lock. So, talks about all that. Talks about the savings, the horsepower. And, basically, it just gives a rundown of the features. Uh, it does have a two-stage clutch. I don't think I mentioned that. Uh, but, you know... Like a lot of uh, utility tractors, you step down partway, 
stops your ground travel. You step down all the way, it shuts everything off. So that's very much the same way other manufacturers were doing it here with tractors of that same size. Ten and a half gallon fuel tank. So, like I said, I bet it'll run a long time on that. So, live PTO, even though it's dual stage clutch, but that essentially gives you a live PTO. Diesel weighs in at 3760 pounds. So, I suppose that the biggest two features of this tractor that they were proud of was the uh, traction weight transfer hitch and the fuel savings, you know, because those were things that... Uh, this clearly probably had the advantage of over other other tractors that they offered. But anyway, we'll go back to looking at the tractor itself. They made, I suppose, a total of like 1,648 of these. And of that, there's maybe less than 100 known to still exist. So if you have one and you haven't already talked to Nelson LeCount... You need to get a hold of him so that he can add your tractor to the registry so that we have some idea how many are still out there. Because I venture that there are more out there and people just don't know about telling him. This tractor was not on the list until I got a hold of him. So there are still tractors out there that are not on the list. This tractor is serial number 101350. So... I assume that means it's the 350th one built, and that would also mean that it is of the earlier style, which still has a lot of the British uh, type fasteners on it, the Whitworth uh, thread, and so a lot of the pipe thread, grease fittings, everything is really oddball in the United States. It's old British thread, so got to be careful when I take something apart on this that I don't lose it because it may be hard to find uh, a replacement. Another way I guess I've learned that you could tell the early ones from the later ones is the early ones had five lug front wheels, the later ones had six. I guess we can look at the serial number tag on it. You can see what they look like. A lot of times this is missing because as you can see it's bolted to the battery box or riveted to the battery box and uh, so specification number is something weird like VAD whatever and then serial number 100 350 D because it is a diesel and it even says made in England on the tag now if you have one and your tag is missing all is not lost because they also stamped the number up here it rained apparently last night just enough to make it miserable for me but there you go 100 d so that's a good way to tell whether you really have one of these tractors and not just a repainted david brown uh but i don't think any of the 850 david browns made it to the united states uh as they were so it would be very unusual, I think, to find one of those over here. But anyway. So, over the course of making these, there were several improvements. As I said, uh, they changed to some more unified thread fasteners later on. Six lug front wheels. The front axle, I know, changed from this cast forging thing to a, uh, like a stamped steel construction i'm not exactly sure when that took place but anyway there's resources out there i've seen a lot of incorrect information on the internet so if you see one and uh, you're reading about it i don't agree with some of the stuff that some of the places have said that's not really the reason you know some people said that this was oliver's way to get into the diesel utility tractor market well no they had a super 55 diesel many years before this so they already were making diesel tractors about this size it's uh just a very unusual little thing i i think it's cute i mean 
something different. It has uh, top link draft sensitivity, which is different from Oliver's because they use the lower links to do their draft sensing. However, the Super 55 and 550 are the same way. They use top link draft sensitivity. And back here you have your combination PTO and then if you had belt pulley it would be right in there. This tractor does not have it. I need to get operator's book ordered for this if I can find it and stuff like that because I have no idea about a lot of things on this. I'd like to find a copy of the service book too because I'm shooting in the dark here working on it. I know very little to nothing about uh, what some of this stuff does. So before I go really hacking on it with wrenches, I really want to find out what the correct way is. Originally, it would have had two 6-volt batteries. That's why we have this crossover cable here. And I will probably... I'm kind of torn on what to do there. That's a nice original cable. I hate to cut it to get it out of there, but I really don't need it on here. I'll probably just stick with 112. Here is the original PTO cover so you can loosen your bolts twist that on cover that up very nice original little tractor uh, I have since found these lenses for these two lights and I got that coming rubber grommets one side's clear one side's red uh, I need a reflector there I see the lights do work. I had them on last night. I used it to chase calves and uh, worked pretty good. The seat pan is supposed to be white. Somebody has went back and repainted it red. I guess it was probably looking rusty, so they painted her with some red paint. But they did save the decal, which is nice. I'm missing the battery box lids which I think are being reproduced so that shouldn't be too big of a problem as you can see uh, it is positive ground and this is kind of the only problem with the original batteries that I've heard of is that your post would be end up under the seat and it would arc out now for luck this battery that I use in all my tractors is uh, small enough that it will fit over here. So I'm just going to cut a little block of wood to drop in there so it stays out of the way. And then I think that'll be a uh, problem avoided. You can see the gauges. We have a charging light and an oil light and a temperature gauge which looks like maybe it's been replaced. Tachometer showing 1,061 hours. Of course, I noticed while using it that it is not working, so I need to check the cable. So there's no way to really know how many hours it has on it, but it doesn't look like many, uh, many hours on it. I have heard the story that I got from the guy I got it from, the dealer. The tractor was bought new in that county, supposedly and it was owned by a guy and he kept it in the barn and kept good care of it he sold it and for the last three or four years it sat outside to the new the new owner didn't put it in the shed and that's a shame because i would say that most all of this aging happened while that guy had it and it sat outside because who knows how it would have looked if it had been uh you know kept inside I don't know what we got here. There's an original dealer sticker. I just now noticed. I cannot see what it says. And I guess there's really no way to tell. It's been on there and then peeled off. And you can just see the imprint of the parts and service. And then... I guess that was brought out by the rain. Now when I rubbed on it, it's gone. Oh well. It doesn't matter where it came from. It's living here now. So that's cool. 
there's just so many unique little features about it uh styling this is the factory muffler from what i've seen rounded on both ends the replacements do not have that uh you can see the grill has taken a hit at some point and most of them have they do reproduce these i've got a line out on some to try to find out if it's cheaper to just buy a different one or whether i should try to pound out this one a little bit interestingly enough i have not figured out yet what holds this sheet metal on other than gravity because it's just sitting on here it has two little pegs that stick up on the front and it's supposed to fit in the grill this side is missing the tab so it doesn't have anything and then back here it just has a piece of rubber and i really don't know what's supposed to hold this down i mean that's where books are going to be helpful if i can find find books on it so i kind of have some idea of what's going on but basically for what i gave for it i think that it is a uh i don't know good investment i'll probably never sell it so i guess that's not a good argument but it's uh something different that not everybody has and cute so we'll let you hear it run make sure it's in neutral so it does not kill us oh, i need to put my battery cable back on too great I mean just purrs there we go it's got a little finger shaped trigger to shut the fuel off so anyway the only thing I've done to it so far is fix the starter button. One of the wires had broken off. Yesterday when I went to get it, I started it with a screwdriver. And it had probably sat for three or four weeks. And I put a battery in it and it fired right up instantly. So it was harder starting today than it was, uh, you know, after sitting. So it's kind of cooler today though. So maybe that's, that's its problem. But uh i've never even looked let's take a look in the old transmission yeah it's got lube in it so another misconception people have about these is that the engine is a perkins and in fact it is not it uses the cab fuel pump and all that like perkins do but this is 100% David Brown. They built the engine and the whole tractor. They were quite proud of their little tractors. And uh, they started out, of course, as a gearbox and transmission maker. And they even, way back in the day, had a collaboration with Harry Ferguson and made some tractors. Then that deal fell through. Then he teamed up with Henry Ford and then that deal fell through and then i don't know if he just went totally on his own later on or how that was but to me that seems like maybe harry ferguson was the problem you know because he couldn't seem to get along with people but i don't know that so i don't really care either so anyway i would like to do a few little cosmetic things to this and i probably i want to try to take it to a show this weekend if i can get all that done uh i'd like to take the hood and stuff off and try to pound the dents out a little bit better it's got the grill beat up it's got a few little wrinkles like here and then this is bowed out from that the lights work though so i really don't know it's they probably won't after i disturb it but I'd like to clean up this muffler and paint it a little bit. Uh, 
just to make it look more attractive. And I got some flits. I want to try to bring back some original paint and see how well that works. And can't really think of anything else to tell you about it. Uh, it needs a few little things. Like I said, I don't know anything about it, so I gotta, I gotta do my research before I, I just start doing stuff. You know, there's a cable there that does something, and it's bad. And there's, uh, so I gotta figure out what that is all about. When you look at the hydraulic levers, this one controls your three point. This one doesn't appear to be doing whatever it was intended to do so need to figure that out this is like a brake i would assume a brake lock but i can't get it to lock so i don't know what's wrong or missing there but we'll figure it out like i said we've only had it home one day so uh, another thing i have i put this bar in here so that the arms wouldn't hit the tires uh, i have the original draw bar but to me it looks like you have to take the three-point arms off to put the drawbar on. And then I think these hook to the drawbar and hold it up. I'm not sure. I'll go show you the drawbar. And uh, if anybody knows any more about these than I do, do not be shy in the comments to tell me. Because, like I said, this is I know nothing about these other than what I've read here and there. So... Let's go take a look at that draw bar. So here is the draw bar that was laying there with it. And like I said, I'm not exactly sure how it mounts up, but I'm pretty sure that the you take the lift arms off, it slides in there, and then the top, the pulling, uh, I don't know, what do you, what do you call them, the adjustable links pin in here instead of like in your arms hold your draw bar up so not sure about that but looks to me like this has not been on the tractor for quite a while so obviously it was used mainly for three-point work so i don't know if i will put this on or not i'll probably just leave the three-point arms on it and then whenever i die and you come to my auction to buy this Make sure that they give you that draw bar with the tractor because they probably won't realize what it is. And with anything I got, you know, you've seen enough videos, you know what goes with what. Tell the auctioneer you want all the pieces and that I told you to tell him that. So there you go. Well, I wanted to pull the 550 over next to it so you could see what they look like side by side. But now for some reason, the 550 battery's dead. So I guess it's jealous and it's punishing me now but you can see they are very similar in size these uh 500 is just a little ever so slightly longer maybe i may not be pulled up totally even but basically they are the same same horsepower just built in two different two different countries so they did make a 600 which was a lot less numbers i think they only made like 500 of the of the oliver 600s which were based on the david brown 990 i think and uh anyway now i guess i'd like to find one of those to go with this but someday someday as always if you like the videos give them a thumbs up uh subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss whatever comes next thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one